Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to episode number 14 of Running Rants. Today, we are right here, right outside of the Lockwood Matthews Mansion in Norwalk, Connecticut. It's right near the main road, and the mall that just opened is down the road, but some people seem to forget that this was actually in a movie in the 70s as well as the early 2000s. And then we're gonna go run right over there, creepy haunted graveyard, so stay tuned. So welcome to episode 14. Like I said, we are here in Norwalk, Connecticut, right outside the beautiful Lockwood Matthews Mansion. Now, as I told you in the intro, this was actually featured in a movie, The Stepford Wives. Now this movie came out in the 70s, and it was also remade in the early 2000s. I'm not too familiar with everything about the movie itself, though you can't deny how beautiful this mansion truly is. Looking at it, you would not tell that there's actually 62 rooms fit inside this building. So most of the information I know is from the newer movie that was remade in the early 2000s. Now, this was actually built in 1860s and it cost about $2 million to make when it actually came out. Now, $2 million now would be very expensive, but the architecture is second to none. It's beautiful and I haven't really been around this too often. It's right downtown and I myself have not really seen it more than a couple times. It sits right next to the main road across from the YMCA. Rest in peace. And it is nothing short of amazing. They actually have tours here at the Lockwood Mansion. However, it seems to be most popular around Halloween. They do Victorian ghost tours going through the entire house. So some fun facts about this house and having it been in the movies as far as the one in the 2000s is that Norwalk agreed as well as Lockwood that they could use this mansion in their movie, but it would cost them $100,000 for Paramount Pictures, of which they were like, yeah, $100,000, we can sink into it uh, for renovations and whatnot. But they also, on top of that $100,000, to my understanding, they were given $150,000 to renovate it to the movie's liking. They wanted to keep it historically accurate to the movie and whatnot. Now this was early 2000s, I wanna say maybe 2005. Had Nicole Kidman in it and a slew of other actors and actresses. It looks like it's four to five stories. Now, this is just speculation. And just the trim on the top, the little gates, it really is beautiful. So if you've seen the movie, let me know what you guys think of it. I have not seen it yet, but by the time of me posting this, I might just get around to watching it. Now, it was just a short, brief history of this place, but if you live in or around Norwalk, Connecticut, I would definitely say stop on in. It's really fun, and at night, it's even creepier, to be completely honest. And it's weird to say that because there's a children's museum right over there, the main road, the mall, but it does have this creepy feeling to it. And what I would say is the creepiest aspect of this is that right down here, a pretty spooky cemetery that I went to a couple years back and I haven't been to since. So let's hop on down there. Let's give it a look. Now in the meantime though, if anyone is looking up the mansion, I mean it seems like tourism, at least for here, is one of the bigger things that Norwalk uses to pull people in. Early 2000s, it was said that about 20,000 people a year would come and visit Lockwood Mansion and take tours. That being the early 2000s, and before the movie came out, I would say that now that number has definitely risen, as well as the new mall having just opened. So here we are. As I said, it is really weird to be in the cemetery. You can see it from I-95, which stretches from Maine all the way down to Florida. Busy road, the dumps over there, but kind of has this ominous feeling to it. It is, a, it is a relatively old cemetery. If you can tell right here, it died 1861. I don't think this one is as well held up as the other cemeteries we have visited. 
personally, but it's also in a way, way more populated area. We're in South Norwalk right now, so I'd imagine this is a hot spot for guys and gals. If you look at some of these, these are late 1800s, which is ridiculous to think about. Hey, look at the dragonfly. Now, the time that I came here, like I said, a while back, nothing super creepy really happened, but it was really interesting. Could just be that we're in South Norwalk, but there were a bunch of cats, and uh, with so many noises going around, with you know, with the highway, with the dumping over here, construction's always going on, it's kind of hard to tell if you hear something, but that also makes it a little more creepy. For instance, myself, when there's so many noises going on, it's easier to like misconceive something as what you think to be a voice. Uh, I always kind of get this phenomenon when I'm maybe like in the bathtub and you hear the water consistently going and, it, and for some reason you just feel like you might hear something, like someone's calling your name or something because there's something so loud towards you that you kind of feel like anything else you hear is trying to overwhelm that noise getting to you. Not really sure how to put it into words, but I kind of get that sense. I'm so overstimulated that I'm almost searching for a different noise besides the ones I'm hearing over there. But let's go a little stroll through here. I think this is going to be a shorter episode. I don't want it to overstay its visit. But I do want you guys to come down and visit this place. It's beautiful. If you have kids, there's a splash pad over at the park right behind those trees. You have the kids museum, the dump if anyone wants that. It's right off 95. And there's also a bunch of really interesting graffiti right underneath there. Which I don't think I'm going to go to right now because it seems to be blocked off primarily due to construction. But come on down, guys. Treat it with respect. And I think uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised how beautiful it is. Sort of a hidden gem, I'd say. I know it's a tourist attraction, one of, the, one of the biggest ones we have. But honestly, I never have heard of anyone who's gone on a tour here. I'm a little bit interested in the Halloween tours they have, so we'll have to see. Elizabeth Haynes Bartlett died in 1723. This is the earliest surviving headstone. Many gravestones in the 17th and 18th century were simply field stones, sometimes with only primitive carvings. Slate stones such as this were closely and often imported from Boston area. Number 10, let's go look at that. Oh shit, guys, a fucking snake. <laughs> oh, you, started, you saw it here, guys. Well, run and rant. <laughs> you don't even know what's gonna happen. Fuck, I almost stepped on a snake. Jeez, Jesus. I can't tell if these are them or not, but if anything, these definitely look old as dust um so one of these either these ones are right over here mid to early 1700s it's quite impressive oh is this it nope another elizabeth this is barlett though 1761 that's that's mister though 1761. That was before our independence. It's like 250 years ago. Well, there you guys go. That was a fun little episode. This is a, it's a decently sized cemetery in a huge area and it's kind of just a little interesting to see the history of this i want to say that that was one of the oldest gravestones we've seen so far in running rants i have to think back on the ones from guntown and union if anything they're all in that same kind of era but that was the oldest one we found so super fun i got scared by that snake that was next level but uh thanks for going on the little jog with me I want to put out some more of quality versus quantity, and I hope to make this still twice a week. 
and I have some couple uh, good ones coming up for October. So stay tuned, enjoy, stay spooky guys. You guys already know, videos over here, videos over there. Check them out. Thanks a lot.